Published 0406 Est, the 19th of November 2017. Updated 1218 Est, the 19th of November 2017. Zimbabwe President Robert Mugabe has agreed to step down after 37 years in power. The world's oldest leader is due to officially announce his departure on live television tonight. The news was greeted with ecstatic celebrations all over the country, with cars honking horns and crowds spontaneously taking to the streets of the capital. Hordes of people danced, sang and shouted anti-Mugabe slogans in scenes that looked likely to overshadow yesterday's protests on the streets of Harare tonight. It came after Mail Online exclusively revealed that the elderly dictator was in a state of psychological collapse, crying for his dead son and late first wife, refusing to speak a wash and staging a desperate hunger strike. Emerson Crocodile Nangagwa, the former vice president who was appointed the new leader of the ZANUP this morning, now looks destined to become Zimbabwe's new president as early as tomorrow. Zimbabwe President Robert Mugabe was fired as leader of the ruling ZANUPF party and replaced by Emerson Nangagwa, the vice president he fired earlier this month. Nangagwa, the former state security chief, is in line to head an interim post Mugabe unity government that will focus on rebuilding ties with the outside world and stabilizing an economy in freefall. Mugabe met with army officials on Sunday after being removed as leader of ZANUP. He and Army Commander Constantino Chiwenga were expected to discuss Mugabe's exit. The frail dictator, pictured center speaking to army officials, has been staging a hungry strike over his confinement in house arrest and is refusing to take regular baths to speak ahead of his announcement. Mugabe broke down in tears and asked for his dead wife and son before meeting army chiefs on Sunday after being ousted as leader of Zimbabwe's ZANUP party, one of his aides has told Mail Online. The frail 93-year-old has until noon local time on Monday to resign as president or impeachment proceedings will start, Zanup said. Mugabe was replaced by Nangagwa after all ten Zimbabwean provinces passed no-confidence motions against the dictator two days earlier. Ahead of his meeting with army officials to discuss his exit, Mugabe was wailing profusely and saying that he wished he could speak to his dead wife, Sally Mugabe, and his late son, Michael Namodzanika, who died from cerebral malaria in 1966 at the age of three. He spends most of his time looking at an old photograph of Sally. It is terrible, the aide said of Mugabe's first wife, Hudi of kidney failure in 1992. In 1996, Mugabe went on to marry his current wife, Gucci Grace, who was also expelled from her role as head of the ZANUP Women's League forever. The frail dictator has been staging a hungry strike over his confinement in house arrest and is refusing to take regular baths to speak, the aide added, ahead of his meeting with army officials to discuss his exit. Mugabe was wailing profusely and saying that he wished he could speak to his dead wife, Sally Mugabe, and his late son, Michael Namodzanika Mugabe and Sally wed in 1961 and were together until Sally D of kidney failure in 1992. Sally is pictured above celebrating an election victory in Rhodesia in 1980, ahead of his meeting with army officials to discuss his exit. Mugabe was wailing profusely and saying that he wished he could speak to Sally Mugabe, and his son, Michael Namodzanika, who died from cerebral malaria in 1966 at three years old. Mugabe's hated wife, Gucci Grace Pictured, has also been expelled from her role as head of the ZANUP Women's League Forever leader of Zimbabwe's war veterans. Association Christopher Musfangwa Center reacts during the ZANUP Zimbabwe African National Union Patriotic Front Central Committee meeting to recall Zimbabwe's president at Rebo at Mugabe the party's headquarters in Harare. The only person who has managed to get through to him was the Catholic cleric Father Fidelis Makonori, who is mediating between Mr. Mugabe and the generals, the aide added. Images of the meeting showed Mugabe, who wore a black suit, white shirt and red tie, with his hand to his head and deep in conversation with senior security officials, including Army Chief Constantino Chiwenga who led the military takeover earlier this week. 
President Robert Mugabe this afternoon met with Zimbabwe Defense Forces generals at State House, the Herald said on its Twitter feed, accompanied by photographs, Mr. Nyingag were within touching distance of the presidency, delayed only by Mr. Mugabe's continued refusal to step down. Following his resignation, Mugabe could live as an elder statesman in Zimbabwe, or travel to a country where he has property, including South Africa, Dubai or Singapore. While Mugabe has been removed from his role of ZANUP party leader, his title as Zimbabwean president remains. Impeaching the president is the next step when parliament resumes Tuesday, and lawmakers will definitely put the process in motion, the main opposition's parliamentary chief whip told the Associated Press. Zimbabwean war veterans leader Chris Musfang was sent to greet other delegates ahead of ZANUP meeting to dismiss Mugabe from his role as party leader. Delegates raised their fists as they replaced Mugabe with Emerson Crocodile Nangagwa as leader of the ZANUP ruling party. Delegates celebrate after Zimbabwe and President Robert Mugabe was dismissed as party leader at an extraordinary meeting of the ruling ZANUF Central Committee in Harare on Sunday. Article 96 of Zimbabwe's constitution says that the president can resign if they submit a letter to the parliament speaker who must publicly announce it within 24 hours. Resignation would be the fastest, simplest and least risky way for Mugabe to leave power but he has resisted calls to step down since the crisis began. November 6 after a campaign of public insults against Vice President Emerson Nangagwa, Mugabe fires his longtime deputy, later accusing him of plotting to take power via a witchcraft. Nangagwa flees the country. November 13 Army Commander Constantino Chiwenga issues a rare public rebuke, saying the military won't hesitate to step in to calm political tensions and criticizing the handling of the once prosperous southern African nation's crumbling economy. November 14 – Armoured personnel carriers are seen on the outskirts of the capital, Harare. The military moves in overnight, taking control of the state-run broadcaster. November 15 – The military announces that Mugabe is under house arrest and an operation has begun to arrest criminals around him who harmed the economy. Unpopular First Lady Grace Mugabe, who many feared would replace Nyingagwa and even succeed her husband, disappears from view. November 16 – State-run media publish extraordinary photos of a smiling Mugabe shaking hands with the army commander at the State House amid negotiations on the president's exit as the military tries to avoid accusations of a coup. November 17 – The army, which continues to refer to Mugabe as president, allows him to make his first public appearance since house arrest. He appears at a graduation ceremony to polite applause. November 18 – The bulk of the capital's roughly 1.6 million people pour into the streets in an anti-Mugabe demonstration that even days ago would have brought a police crackdown. November 19 – Mugabe and the army commander face a second round of departure talks as the ruling party meets on calls to expel Mugabe as party leader. Lawmakers say they will pursue impeachment when parliament resumes Tuesday. During his first meeting on Thursday with the army general who led the military takeover, he bluntly refused to step aside. News of Mugabe's removal comes as Mail Online exclusively revealed that the elderly dictator had gone on hunger strike. One of his close family members confirmed that he was refusing to eat as a strategic ploy. The frail 93-year-old Mugabe has not accepted any food since Saturday, the source revealed, as he continues to be held under house arrest at his Blue Roof mansion. Mugabe's nephew Patrick Dueo said on Saturday that Mr. Mugabe was willing to for what is correct, as an UPF minister confirmed to Mail Online that Mr. Mugabe is also refusing to speak as part of his days-long protest. The old man has been trying a lot of various tricks since last night, the minister, who asked not to be named, said. Hunger strikes, making threats and refusing to talk, leader of Zimbabwe's War Veterans Association Christopher Musfangwa said Mugabe should just resign from his role as president and leave the country. We are going all the way, Musfangwa, who has led the campaign to oust Zimbabwe's ruler of the last 37 years, said H.E. is trying to bargain for a dignified exit but he should just smell the coffee. A day after huge crowds rallied PC in Harare for the 93-year-old Mugabe to go, members of ZANUF's Central Committee stood, cheered and began to sing as the process of recalling Mugabe began. 
Meeting Chair Robert M. P. O. F. U. referred to Mugabe as outgoing president. The meeting also was replacing Mugabe as party head with the vice president whose firing nearly two weeks ago led the military to step in, and recalling forever the unpopular first lady as head of the Women's League. Nyingagwa, who was fired by Mugabe two weeks ago, is expected to lead a new government. Without the military's intervention, First Lady Grace Mugabe likely would have replaced him as vice president and been in a position to succeed her husband. One of Nyingagwa's top aides told Mail Online that Mugabe was like a bitter wife whose husband has filed divorce papers. Speaking outside the ZANUP committee meeting, he said Mugabe is not a problem for us now. He has no power. We are divorcing him and HES getting zero alimony. The aide, who asked not to be named, added whether he resigns today or tomorrow, HES finished. We engineered everything very well and it went very smoothly. Mr. Nangagwa, who has just been appointed leader of ZANUP, is widely expected to become president where the 93-year-old Mr. Mugabe is finally deposed. The new leader's cousin, Lucky Kunen, told Mail Online that when power has been wide transferred, Zimbabwe will change from dictatorship to freedom. My cousin is feeling happy and satisfied that justice has been done, he said. He has always been ready to serve Zimbabwe but the people have not been ready to accept him. That has all changed now. He pointed out that Mr. Nangagwa was the architect of Zimbabwe's security apparatus and judicial system that brought down crime levels. While Mugabe has been removed from his role of ZANUP party leader, his title as Zimbabwean president remains. Pictured above, delegates attend a meeting on Sunday to dismiss Mugabe as leader. Also at the meeting, delegates greeting one another. Pictured above, Mugabe's hated wife, Gucci Grace, was expelled from her role as head of the ZANUP Women's League ahead of the meeting. Musvang were pictured, who has led the campaign to oust Zimbabwe's ruler of the last 37 years, said that Mugabe should just resign from his role as president and leave the country members of ZANUF's Central Committee stood, cheered and began to sing as the process of recalling Mugabe began. Meeting Chair Robert M. P. O. F. U. Pictured referred to Mugabe as outgoing president Mr. Nangagwa, who has just been appointed leader of ZANUP, is widely expected to become president when the 93-year-old Mr. Mugabe is finally deposed. He is from the progressive side of ZANUP and this is what our country needs, the cousin said. He has lost elections twice and never questioned the result. He has shown that he respects democracy and the rule of law. Mr. Kunen added my cousin places the economy first, not his own power. When he takes over, it will finally be the fulfillment of the people's wishes for black empowerment, economic prosperity and democracy. Mr. Nyingarguisade added my only fear was that the fury of our people would be uncontrollable. But they were so magnanimous. We felt like taking over the old man's home and smashing it up, but instead we sang and danced. During Sunday's meeting, Chairman Obit MPOFU told the committee that they were meeting with a heavy heart because Mugabe had served the country and contributed many memorable achievements, but MPOFU said in his opening remarks that Mugabe's wife and close associates have taken advantage of his frail condition to loot national resources. The army threatened to let a mob lynch Mugabe if he didnt stand down, Mail Online revealed on Saturday. Now Mugabe has responded by rejecting all food. Zimbabweans sing and pray at a Christian peace and prayer rally in downtown Harare, Zimbabwe, on Sunday as part of a countrywide peace rally a day after huge crowds rallied PC in the capital for 93-year-old President Robert Mugabe to step down. Zimbabweans around the country attended Sunday church services and peace rallies, praying for the future of their country. Zimbabweans joined a peace rally an hour after Zimbabwe's President Robert Mugabe was officially recalled as party leader of the ruling ZANUP party the Zimbabwe National Army ZNA has taken over control of running the country. Mugabe met with army chiefs on Sunday to discuss his future people embrace as they pray and celebrate during a peace rally an hour after Mugabe was removed from his role as ZANUF's leader if he is under military custody, even by natural causes, then the army will be held responsible by the international community, the family member, who asked not to be named, said. 
that is how the president is trying to put pressure on the army. The family member also said that Grace Mugabe was by her husband's side at the Blue Roof Mansion yesterday, and is thought to still be there today. The meeting follows rumors that the dictator had fled the country after hundreds of thousands took to the streets to protest against his rule. Video footage from protests obtained exclusively by Mail Online showed angry crowds tearing down a huge billboard of Mugabe outside the headquarters of the ruling Zanup party in central Harare. The footage shows dramatic scenes that would have been unthinkable just a few days ago. While Mugabe has been removed as party leader, his title as president of Zimbabwe remains. He can only be removed from his presidency through resignation or impeachment, launched through a constitutional process. What is left is just the technical detail of how HES going to leave, former Zimbabwean finance minister Tendai Biti told Sky News. Even if Zanupf does remove him if they do have the power, which I doubt that doesn't amount to removing him as president of the country. The peace rallies came a day after the bulk of the Harez roughly 1.6 million people poured into the streets in an anti-Mugabe demonstration Zimbabwe's ruling party central committee says longtime President Robert Mugabe must resign as president by noon Monday or impeachment proceedings will start. Pictured above, a peace rally in Harare on Sunday graffiti in support of the ruling Zanup party covered a wall of a building in Harare on Sunday as the group met to discuss Mugabe's future in the party pedestrians walk past a newspaper stand on a street in downtown Harare, Zimbabwe, on Sunday. The newspaper's call for Mugabe to stand down from his role as leader there has to be formal processes either his own resignation or an impeachment, a Zimbabwean ruling party member said there could be prosecutions of members of a party faction close Mugabe's wife. Lawmaker Emmanuel Fundira also said he thinks it is a fait accompli that recently fired Vice President Emerson Nangagwa will be reinstated and chosen to lead Zimbabwe after Mugabe's expected resignation, Fundira said that corrupt and rotten leaders in the ruling party should be punished. There are some resources which have been taken away from this country, Fundira says. Naturally, the laws will follow up and make sure that all those people are brought to book. Mugabe's talks with Army Commander Constantino Chiwenga on Sunday were the second round of negotiations on an exit with a veneer of dignity as the military tries to avoid accusations of a coup. Zimbabwean officials have not revealed details of the talks, but the military appears to favor a voluntary resignation by Mugabe to maintain a veneer of legality in the political transition. The meeting follows rumors that the dictator had fled the country after hundreds of thousands took to the streets to protest against his rule. Video footage from protests obtained exclusively by Mail Online showed angry crowds tearing down a huge billboard of Mugabe outside the headquarters of the ruling Zanup party in central Harare. Crowds gathered in front of an army cordon on the road leading to State House in Hirari on Saturday as part of the protests. Pictured above, the banner removed by protesters in a euphoric gathering that just days ago would have drawn a police crackdown, crowds marched through Zimbabwe's capital on Saturday to demand the departure of President Robert Mugabe, one of Africa's last remaining liberation leaders. After nearly four decades in power Mugabe, in turn, could be using whatever leverage he has left to try to preserve his legacy as one of Africa's liberation leaders or even protect himself and his family from possible prosecution. Zanupf moved forward with the process of formally expelling Mr. Mugabe from the party after all ten of Zimbabwe's provinces passed no confidence motions against him on Friday. Sunday's talks did not appear to include the South African government delegation that took part in the first round. South Africa's president on Saturday said talks are in early days. The Southern African Regional Bloc will hold a four-country summit in Angola on Tuesday to discuss the Zimbabwe situation. Innocent Guineas with the MDC Tea Party said they had been in discussions with the ruling ZANUPF party to act jointly. Guineas said of the talks if Mugabe is not gone by Tuesday, then as sure as the sun rises from the east, impeachment process will kick in. The MDCT has unsuccessfully tried to impeach Mugabe in the past, but now the ruling party has turned against him. Ahead of Sunday's meetings, the Youth League of Zanup called for Mugabe to resign and take a rest as an elder statesman, while his wife, Grace, should be expelled from the party forever, armed SOLRS controller Euphoric.
crowd marching near State House in Hirari, demanding the departure of President Robert Mugabe. Protesters gather at a demonstration of tens of thousands at Zimbabwe grounds in Harare, Zimbabwe. On Saturday, Robert Mugabe came under overwhelming pressure to step down as it was announced that he will meet the head of Zimbabwe's armed forces Sunday morning. Youth League leader Yukai Simbanegavi praises the military for moving against what she describes as a group of criminals led by Grace Mugabe. It is unfortunate that the president allowed her to usurp executive authority from him, thereby destroying both the party and the government, Simbanegavi said at ruling party headquarters on Sunday. The army has also brought intense pressure to bear upon the 93-year-old, threatening to stand aside and allow him to be lynched if he does not stand down soon. A senior politician told Mail Online, Mus with it that he is concerned that the military could end up opening fire to protect Mugabe from protesters. He says there will be more demonstrations like the massive one Saturday if Mugabe's negotiations with the military on his departure from power don't end soon. He hopes Mugabe gives in to the fact that he has got to tender his resignation and leave. We would expect that Mugabe would not have the prospect of the military shooting at people, trying to defend him, Musbangwa said. The choice is his. In an exclusive interview with Mail Online, Musbangwa previously revealed the army gave the dictator a message earlier Saturday. Either he steps down or they will let the people into his mansion to take him. Hundreds of thousands of people took to the streets of Harare to demand the end of dictator Robert Mugabe's rule. Some of the protesters tore down the sign for Mugabe Road, which in recent years would have been met with a severe punishment. The army is threatening to unleash the people and let Mugabe be lynched. The generals said they will not shoot the people for him. Instead, they will abandon their posts and leave him to his fate, Mr. Musfangwa added at first. The army was holding him prisoner. Now they are protecting him from the people. Hundreds of thousands of people took to the streets of Harare on Saturday in a historic show of unity to demand an end to the 37-year reign of dictator Robert Mugabe. Military helicopters flew low overhead as huge crowds marched into the center of the capital city, waving Zimbabwean flags and chanting Remove the Dictator and Mugabe. Our country is not your property. It was an unprecedented show of defiance and unity in this notoriously divided country, as ordinary Zimbabweans from across the political spectrum came together as one to oppose the dictator. Some protesters shouted Gwina, Gwina, or Crocodile, Crocodile, in support of sacked Vice President Emmanuel Crocodile Nangagwa, the favorite to become the next leader. Fiery speeches were delivered at the Harare football stadium to a crowd of hundreds of thousands after a day of chaotic anti-Mugabe parades through the city. Zimbabweans carried their country's flag and chanted Remove the Dictator and Mugabe. Our country is not your property as they voiced their demand for him to leave office after 37 years in power. Some in the crowd also voiced their support for sacked Vice President Emmanuel Crocodile Nangagwa, the favorite to become the next leader, by shouting Gwina, Gwina, or Crocodile, Crocodile, in support of sacked Vice President Emmanuel Crocodile Nangagwa. Mugabe has been given an ultimatum of 24 hours to resigned by the powerful National Liberation War Veterans Association or SOLR takes a selfie in front of a protester. The army has given its backing to a demonstration against Mugabe, who in the past brutally stamped out opposition to his government during Mugabe's rule. Forced rallies were often staged to support him but there was not a single counter-protester coming out in support of him. Several speakers shouted Viva Zimbabwe to prolong cheers and singing from the crowd, mixed with blasts of over the loudspeakers. Mugabe and his typist come wife must go home, said Victor Matemadana, the secretary general of the powerful War Veterans Association. Let's go and take back the country from the State House. He added if HES not at the State House, let's go to the Blue Roof, referring to Mr. Mugabe's £7.5 million mansion where he is under house arrest. Opa Muchinguru Kashiri, the country's environment minister who was Mr. Mugabe's girlfriend in the 80s and 90s and has had physical fights with his wife Grace, said I thank you all for being resolute. Now let's remain focused and finish what we started.
Let's take Mugabe with a strong grip and remove him. During protests Saturday, ecstatic crowds marched through central Harare, cheering and hugging SOLRS, honking horns, dancing. Robert Mugabe at the student graduation ceremony at Zimbabwe Open University on the outskirts of Harare. His last public appearance Mugabe was holed up in his blue roof mansion, which he shares with his wife Grace, who has lavishly decorated its Zimbabweans from all party of society came to together in a show of unity to demand the removal of President Robert Mugabe, members of the powerful war veterans, traditionally a source of support for Mugabe, stand guard at the stage prior to the mass action protests there were fears the opposition rally would degenerate into violence, as happened in 2013 when crowds went on the rampage in Irari after an opposition rally demonstrators sang Bob, you have sold out the country, remember we are the ones who put you there and we are now removing you. Ordinary Zimbabweans said they felt like they were dreaming after the 37-year-old dictatorship crumbled before their eyes. It's like Christmas, said one marcher, Fred Mubbe, who said Zimbabweans have been suffering for a long time. Saturday's protest represented a turning point for the southern African state, where for four decades the public criticism of Mr. Mugabe has been met with brutal punishment and even death. It came as Mr. Mugabe was given an ultimatum of 24 hours to resign by the powerful National Liberation War Veterans Association. In a press conference, a spokesman for the group mocked the elderly dictator, saying Mugabe has no war background. He only came to the front once. The closest Mugabe ever was to the fighting was 400 kilometers away. During the dictator's rule, forced rallies were often staged to support him. By comparison, everybody attended Saturday's march of their own free will and there was not a single counter-protester coming out in support of Mr. Mugabe. There was spirit of harmony in the crowd, the sense of liberation from the sless of the dictator's secret police was tangible. All ten provinces controlled by the ZANUP also passed no confidence motions in the leader, heaping further pressure on him to step down. Crowds gathered at football pitches close to the city centre and marched towards Freedom Square. In Harare, ecstatic crowds marched through central Harare, cheering and hugging SOLRS, honking horns, dancing, and singing. Mugabe was mocked for his record in the war background that led to the foundation of Zimbabwe, with one where veteran saying he only came to the front one. The closest Mugabe ever was to the fighting was 400 kilometers away. Ordinary Zimbabweans said they felt like they were dreaming after the 37-year-old dictatorship crumbled before their eyes even. Formerly loyal party members openly called Mr. Mugabe a dictator and united their efforts in trying to force him to stand down. There were fears that Saturday's event may degenerate into violence, as happened in 2013 when crowds went on the rampage in Harare after an opposition rally. The march began in a spirit of harmony, however, and the sense of liberation from the sless of the dictator's secret police was tangible. Crowds gathered at football pitches close to the city centre and marched towards Freedom Square, formerly known as the Robert Mugabe Square, where a number of political leaders from all parties were to address demonstrators. The historic rally was all the more remarkable for having been organised by Mr Mugabe's own party, the ZANUP, which until Tuesday had treated the despot like a god. What you saw yesterday, it shows that the people have spoken, Mordecai Makori, 71, a retired teacher told AFP after attending a Sunday morning service at the Catholic Cathedral in central Harare. All we want is peace, pet good life with a working economy that creates jobs for our people. We will continue praying for that. I want my children and grandchildren to live a normal good life. The majority of Zimbabweans have only known life under Mugabe's rule, which has been defined by violent suppression, economic collapse and international isolation. One of the marchers said it was like Christmas. Jubilant protesters ride on top of a bus in the streets of Harare. There was a festive atmosphere on the streets of Harare where people seemed overjoyed at the prospect of Mugabe finally being forced out of power. The security forces stood by as the demonstration. In contrast to previous year when protests were brutally quashed, buses were laid on by the ZANUP to ferry thousands of people to the capital to take part in the protest. A woman holds picture of General Constantino Chiwenga, who led the coup against Robert Mugabe. Some of 
the money for mobilizing demonstrators was provided by the army, which spearheaded the attempt to remove Mugabe. Sources suggest Mugabe has been battling to delay to his exit and to secure a deal guaranteeing future protection for him and his family. He attended a university graduation ceremony on Friday, in a show of defiance after the talks with General Constantino Chiwenga, who led the military power grab. The factional succession race that triggered Zimbabwe's sudden crisis was between party hardliner Nangagwa known as the Crocodile and a group called Generation 40 or G40 because its members are generally younger, which campaigned for Grace's cause. She is very acceptable, very much accepted by the people, Mugabe said of Grace in a faltering interview to mark his 93rd birthday last February. The president, who is fated in parts of Africa as the continent's last surviving liberation leader serving as a head of state, is in fragile health. But he previously said he would stand in elections next year that would see him remain in power until he was nearly 100 years old. He became prime minister on Zimbabwe's independence from Britain in 1980 and then president in 1987. Zimbabwe's economic output has halved since 2000 when many white-owned farms were seized, leaving the key agricultural sector in ruins. Zimbabwe's veteran leader Robert Mugabe once quit that head rule his country until he turned 100, but the 93-year-old's decadence long grip on power was slipping on Sunday after his own party told him to resign a face impeachment. First heralded as a liberator who rid the former British colony Rhodesia of white minority rule, Robert Gabriel Mugabe was soon cast in. The role of a despot who crushed political dissent and ruined the national economy. After years behind bars as a political prisoner, Mugabe then led a bloody liberation war, which coupled with sanctions, forced the Rhodesian government to the negotiating table. The country finally won independence as Zimbabwe in 1980. In elections that year, Mugabe swept to power as prime minister, initially winning international plaudits for his policy of racial reconciliation and for extending improved education and health services to the black majority. But his luster faded quickly. After his release from prison in 1974, Mugabe took over as head of the Zimbabwe African National Union ZANU which joined forces in the liberation struggle with Joshua Gamo's Zimbabwe African People's Union ZAPU, and Como was one of the early casualties of Mugabe's crackdown on dissent. In 1982, he was dismissed from government, where he held the home affairs portfolio, after the discovery of an arms cache in his Metaboliland stronghold. Mugabe, whose party drew most of its support from the ethnic Shona majority, then unleashed his North Korean-trained 5th Brigade on Gamos and Debella people in a campaign that left an estimated 20,000 people dead. It was the seizure of white-owned farms nearly two decades later that would complete Mugabe's transformation from darling of the West into international pariah though his status as a liberation hero still resonates in many parts of Africa. Aimed largely at placating angry war veterans who threatened to destabilize his rule, the land reform policy wrecked the crucial agricultural sector, caused foreign investors to flee and helped plunge the country into economic misery. At the same time, critics say, Mugabe clung to power through human rights abuses and by rigging elections. He was a great leader whose leadership degenerated to a level where he really brought Zimbabwe to its knees, said University of South Africa Professor Shadrach Gutto. Britain's former Foreign Secretary Peter Carrington knew Mugabe well, having mediated the Lancaster House talks that paved the way for Zimbabwe's independence. Mugabe wasn't human at all, Carrington told biographer Heidi Holland. There was a sort of reptilian quality about him. You could admire his skills and intellect, but he was an away slippery sort of person. In the final decades of his rule, Mugabe one of the world's most recognizable leaders with his thin stripe of moustache and thick rimmed spectacles has embraced his new role as the antagonist of the West. He used blistering rhetoric to blame his country's downward spiral on Western sanctions, though they were targeted personally at Mugabe and his henchmen rather than at Zimbabwe's economy. If people say you are a dictator, you know they are saying this merely to tarnish and demean your status, then you don't pay much attention, he said in a 2013 documentary.
After decades in which the subject of succession was virtually taboo, a vicious struggle to take over after his death became apparent among the party elite as he reached his 90s and became visibly frail. He had been rumored for years to have prostate cancer, but according to the official account, his frequent trips to Singapore were for treatment related to his cataracts. Mugabe's second wife Grace his former secretary who is 41 years his junior and had been seen as a potential successor boasted that even in his 80s he would rise before dawn to work out. It's true I was dead. I resurrected as I always do once I get back to my country. I am real again, he joked in 2016 after returning from a foreign trip, mocking rumors that he had D. But in his later years, he has stumbled and fallen more than once and delivered the wrong speech at the opening of Parliament in 2015, born on February 21, 1924 into a Catholic family at Kutama Mission northwest of Harare. Mugabe was described as a loner, and a studious child known to carry a book even while tending cattle in the bush. After his carpenter father walked out on the family when he was 10, the young Mugabe concentrated on his stust qualifying as a schoolteacher at the age of 17, an intellectual who initially embraced Marxism, he enrolled at Fort Hare University in South Africa, meeting many of Southern Africa's future black nationalist leaders. After teaching in Ghana, where he was influenced by founder President Kwame Nkrumah, Mugabe returned to Rhodesia where he was detained for his nationalist activities in 1964. He spent the next 10 years in prison camps or jail. During his incarceration, he gained three degrees through correspondence but the years in prison left their mark. His four-year-old son by his first wife, Ghanaian-born Sally Francesca Hayfron, d while he was behind bars. Rhodesian leader Ian Smith denied him leave to attend the funeral. Years later, Mugabe had two sons and a daughter by second wife Grace. The ambition of the first lady, who had been viewed as a frontrunner to replace her husband, is widely seen by analysts as the catalyst for the military takeover as the army refused to accept her as Mugabe's potential successor. His real obsession was not with personal wealth but with power, said biographer Martin Meredith. Year after year Mugabe sustained his rule through violence and repression crushing political opponents, violating the courts, trampling on property rights, suppressing the independent press and rigging elections, 